<laughs> Along this merry path of owning knives and collecting knives and using knives and doing videos about knives, I have stumbled across a couple of makers who I have just basically decided I will no longer own. I think if you are a regular to this channel, you know one of them. About a month ago, I stumbled upon a knife that really attracted my attention. But it was from one of the makers where I had vowed I'm never buying another knife from them because every one I've ever gotten, the 20 plus, have all had issues. And I'm quite frankly disgusted with them and never going to own one of their knives ever again. Those are pretty harsh words. I just got the knife. Here's the box. The thing that really, really attracted me was the handle material. I, I, for whatever reason, the logger, and I don't mean go out in the woods, that kind of logger. I mean drinking beer logger. That handle material just spoke to me. This is weird, but it gave me kind of a warm and fuzzy feeling. For whatever reason, maybe because I'm Irish and it's a beer name. It's genetic. I, who, who knows? Because of my past history with Bark River and being burned 20 plus times with something wrong with every freaking knife, I am leery. So I really scrutinized the pictures on eBay. And this particular seller was very good about all the different angles of the handle and the blade and all that kind of good stuff. So I could see things that would normally be wrong with a Bark River looking okay with this knife. The symmetry of the blade grind. This is the Scandi ground version. At least that's what they call it, Scandi Vex. Which, side note, by the way, I am not going to have it come down to a zero edge. I actually use the Spyderco Sharp Maker, the 40 degree side, so that means it's 20 per side. It still is very slicey. Things that are normally wrong with Bark Rivers didn't seem to be with this one. The butt, which is typically canted in one direction or the other, is perfectly straight on this one. There is usually more ground away on one side of the butt than the other, making them not the same thickness in relation to the spine. That is not the case with this knife. This little bevel is usually uneven. It's almost perfect. It could use just a little bit of touch up, but I think I'm going to let this one go. Sometimes when you get a Bark River, this edge is very sharp. And so is this edge and this edge. And those are a couple of the first things that I would do when I would get especially a gunny, is I would just take it to the belt grinder or bastard file and smooth those out because you don't need any hot spots. And then the other thing I would smooth out is how it comes around this edge here. That's already been done. One would almost think that Mike Stewart has watched a video or two of mine and gone, hey, maybe we could take a little bit more time finishing these knives and justify the crazy prices that we're charging. Or this knife was slated for DBK and never went there. I have said this publicly, and I truly suspect that whenever they order a knife, the people at Bark River are hand-selecting one that is a great example and shipping it to DBK. I've even messaged back and forth with the DBK guys. If they suspected sometimes maybe that might be the case, they wouldn't have been surprised if that was the case. But they've also had a couple of duds. Apparently, things slip through the cracks, whoever they're going to. A lot of attention to detail was given to this particular knife. Everything that should be symmetrical is symmetrical. The curvature of the handle on each side for the palm swell. How this is nicely rounded. The plunge line right in front of the choil is perfect. Even that small choil, which is usually very sharp and I have to get in there and polish down, is ground down a la Bob Dozer slash Klein. I was a little nervous as to how the natural micarta liner would look inside the lager, but I like it. It's a nice touch. I guess this kind of looks like honey and I want to eat it, but that's just weird. Everything is, is rounded. Why do you want this rounded? Because when you choke up, that sort of thing, you don't need any sharp things. I have always said the only thing that should be sharp on a knife is the edge. The only exception is a 90 degree spine. 
which this does not have. The symmetry of the blade grind is spot on. You can tell the height of the Scandivex grind is the same on both sides. And a telltale place to look is right here when it gets to the edge. You can see where the transition line is. The other thing that attracted me about this knife was the fact that it's Magna Cut. I've heard good things about Magna Cut. Did a little research. People are saying that Bark River's Magna Cut is actually performing well. Hopefully that is the case with this knife. This will not be a safe queen. I am going to use it. Another thing that I really like about this knife is the choice of thong hole that they used. I've seen some very anemic ones. This one is nice fat brass, polished evenly. Sometimes the circle is oval because they polish too hard on one side and the polishing wheel gets inside there and polishes one edge. That's even. If you're going to be spending between three and four hundred dollars for a knife, it damn well better be darn near perfect. This one is. The brass Corby rivets are perfect, polished. These are perfectly flush. And sometimes that's tricky because when you polish something, G10 polishes differently than brass. Brass is pretty soft and sometimes you can make brass go away and the G10 stays behind and you'll have a little dip. That may be too much information, but I want you to be the most educated knife consumer you can possibly be and know what to look for on knives. What's really cool about this knife is how it is translucent and the light plays on it. And you can see the rivets through the handle. That's kind of cool. I am very pleased with this knife. You notice everything I have said has been about the knife and not the sheath. Well, that is where this knife loses me. I have done a few videos about knife sheaths, what makes a good sheath, what doesn't make a good sheath. Feel free to watch those. I have specifically called out Randall Made Knives and Bark River Knives on their sheath design and their sheath selection for a particular knife. This is a lovely knife. Classy, warrants a nice sheath. What it came with was this pancaked leather piece of shit. Such a disappointment. But I knew it was coming with this because of the photo. Oftentimes, if you buy one from one of the knife dealers, they don't really show you the sheath. And sometimes they'll show you sheath A and you actually get sheath Z. That's what a piece of shit sheath sounds like when it bounces off your metal trash can and hits the metal heat register. Thank God I have bucket o sheaths. Now, I have already gone through this and chosen this one. It's a good size. I wet molded it. Now we have a proper sheath and I like the color combo. Just because I bought one of these guys doesn't mean I am now a fan of Bark River. I think quite frankly, that <laughs> this was a fluke. I honestly think that the only way to really buy one of these knives is through eBay. And if a seller is showing lots of pictures, I mean, sometimes up to 24 pictures, you can really get a good idea as to what knife is going to be headed your way. Whereas if you buy one from one of the dealers, they show you a picture or two and that's it. And side note, pro tip, whatever you want to call it, Unless it's a natural handle material, the only picture you're going to see is a stock photo. If you're buying one that has a wooden handle, ironwood, whatever, it doesn't matter, or a natural handle material, you will see after the description, it'll say, Gunny, ironwood, number one. Gunny, ironwood, number two. You will get that specific knife. And they usually show you both sides of the handle, so you can see if the two pieces of wood or two pieces of bone match. But if you're buying any of the other handle materials, even this one, they wouldn't show you both sides. And you might think you don't need to see both sides. And you might be right, but I like to see both sides. I like to see if there's any imperfections before I buy it. So the more pictures, the better. What are your thoughts on Bark River? Do you have a positive experience with them, a negative experience with them? I think this is my first all positive, minus the sheath, 
that's now going to the landfill. Please don't slam me too hard for having bought another Bark River or even saying something positive about Bark River. I have to be completely honest with you guys. If I find something that I like, I'm going to tell you. If I find something that I don't like, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to be completely transparent in my opinion of whatever it is I'm presenting to you. That being said, Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I will see you on the next one. <music>